Hello students, this video is related with the valuation of the bond. Bond is a very complex topic. We will solve a question and discuss the different topics and the techniques valuation of bond of company. So always remember that your first step will be going to calculate the spot yield on government bond. Now spot yield or individual yield refers to let's say RF on government bond. Okay, you will be given with the different bonds of the government securities and you have to calculate the spot yield on government bond. Then, next step would be you will calculate the spot yield of corporate bond on the basis of spot yield you calculated on government bond. And this would be how you will calculate it. Spot yield, RF, Kaplan equation, plus the credit spread. Now using the spot yield of corporate bond, you will value the bond. Okay. And then you will calculate yield to maturity of bond. So these are the steps we are going to follow. I think we should directly start with the question. This is the question total review in kit 44 number question. It is calculate the valuation and yield to maturity under its old and new rating. So it is the if you we just read the data here, third, fourth paragraph, Protag has issued 8% bond which has a face value 100 and a premium of 2% on redemption in three years' time. The government, Ormland, has three years' bond. So we have been given with the government bonds, bond one, bond two, bond three. So first of all, let us calculate the, because we have been given with the government bonds, so we will directly calculate Toltec, first of all, let us find out the spot yield on government bond. We have been given bond one. It's redeemable in one year's time, coupon rate 9% and current market value 104. Bond one. So year zero one, in year zero, investor will going to invest at a current market value of 104. And year one, he will earn nine plus redemption value 100. So this is 109. So 
So 104 is the investment equals the present value of the future payments. We have been given with the payments, but not the discounted, which we have to basically calculate. 104 equals 109. Discount rate formula is 1 plus R is R1. So 1 plus R1 equals 109 divided by 104. And this R1 equals 109 divided by 104 minus 1. It is 4.81%. So this is the spot yield of year one on government bond. Similarly, let's find out the bond two. Bond two in year zero, going to invest 102 and coupon rate 7%. 102 in year one, seven. In year two, it is 107. The seven is the first year, it will be discounted at one plus R1. 107 relates with year 2, it will be discounted at 1 plus R2 raised to the power 2. Now solve this equation. 7 divided by R1, 1.0481 plus 107, 1 plus R2 raised to the power 2. This suggests if we solve the equation, R2 equals here. 5.95%. So now calculate bond 3. In bond 3, 98 current value, 6% coupon. In year 1, 6. Year 2, 6. Year 3, 1, 0, 6. Year 1 discounted at year 1's rate was 4.8%. Year 2, we have just calculated 0 0.59 raised to the power 3, 2, and we have to calculate R3. So now let's solve it. So R3 equals 6.83%. So this is how you calculated the spot yield on government bond. One, two, and three. 4.81. 5.95% and 6.83%. Now step number two, calculate the spot yield. We have been told that we have own old rating and the new rating. We have to calculate the spot yield of Toltec bond on both old rating and new rating. So old rating, what is the old rating of Toltec? Double A to triple B, double A. So its current rating is double A. So spot yield of year one equals RF year one plus Credit spread based on double A. What was the RF? It was 4.81% plus double A one year. What is the credit spread value raised based on the SP or any other credit agencies? Double A is 18 basis points. This is 4.9. 9%. Spot yield of year 2, RF year 2 was 5.95% plus year 2, 31.31. So this is 6.26% and the spot yield of year 3 is 6.83% plus Forty-five. 
7.28. So now we have calculated the spot yield. So now let us find the value of bond. Under old rating. Year one, two, three. So the bond has it, what is the nature of the bond? Eight percent issued bond, nominal value 100. So we will receive eight, eight, and redemption is at and a premium of two percent on redemption in three years' time. It means it will be redeemed at 102 plus 8. 102 will be redemption value and 8 is the interest of last year. It is 110. So now you are going to discount it. So first year discount rate, we have calculated spot yield. 1 plus 0 0.04. Raised to the power minus 1, 1.0626 raised to the power minus 2. And this is 1.0728 raised to the power minus 3. So if I add them, <coughs> first multiply, then add them. The valuation of the bond is... One zero three point eight zero. Now let us calculate yield to maturity. Yield to maturity is also called gross redemption yield. It is the total amount of the yield produced in during the whole maturity of the bond. And it is calculated through IRR calculation. So in year zero, we have already calculated the value, market value. One to three, we will be going to receive the interest. And in year three, the redemption is on premium 102. Now take the discount factor, let's say 8%. Take the discount factor, let's say 7%. So hit and trial basis. At one point, so this is the value same. It is 103.8. This is NAT. So 8% three years NAT. If you look at it, it is 2.577. So this is 20.6. And third year cash flow multiplied by third year discount factor at the rate of 8%, it is 0.794. So this is 2.19 negative. So we have to decrease the discount rate because we are already in the negative value. So if we have a 7% discount factor, 103.8 into 1, then 3 years 7% discount rate, it is 2.624. And the third year is 102 into third year discount factor of 7%. Put these value in IRR equation. We have a positive percentage, 7% plus positive NPV 0.42. Add both the NPVs and take the difference. So it is almost 7.15% yield to maturity ratio. Same process is repeated for the new rating. Okay. I am not repeating the calculation. New ratings. Now you are down to triple B. So first of all, you will calculate the spot yield on the corporate bonds. 
आर एफ वन प्लस क्रेडिट स्प्रेड वी हैव ऑलरेडी कैलकुलेटेड आर एफ वन आर एफ वन वॉज फोर पॉइंट नाइन फोर पॉइंट एट वन परसेंट एंड नाउ क्रेडिट स्प्रेड इज बेस्ड ऑन ट्रिपल बी ट्रिपल बी फर्स्ट ईयर फिफ्टी फोर so this is the new spot yield now similarly you will calculate the spot yield of year 2 what is the rf2 value rf2 5.95 plus triple b 2 years 0.69 and same is the case with spot yield 3 This is six point six four percent, and here the third year would be six point eight three plus third year credit spread at triple B eight six. Seven point six nine percent. Now, using these spot yields, you will calculate the valuation. and then under this new rating you will calculate the y to m ratio yield to maturity i want to discuss another topic here and that is the duration of the bond let's say under the old rating although it is not required here 1 2 and you are going to discount them at let's say discount rate of 10% 0.5 Point eight two six point seven five. Now multiplied with their relevant years two, three, and finally you add them. You got the duration. How you got the duration? Present value of return phase. This is present value of return phase. Return phase means year one, two, three in which you will going to return divided by present value of investment phase means investment value. Okay, I am not into the uh, kind of you can say the calculation. I want to discuss the topic which is more important here. So first of all, let's quickly brief the topic that. always remember that bond prices are sensitive to the changes in interest rate okay and is dependent on redemption date so one thing you should remember interest rate and bond prices what is the relationship between these two inverse interest rate goes up bond prices go down interest rate goes down bond prices goes up so remember bonds which are due to be redeemed at a later date which have a lengthier duration or the lengthier maturity date are more price sensitive to interest rate and therefore 
they are riskier. So what is the relationship we have just evaluated here? That if maturity of the bond is higher, its sensitivity to interest rate would also be higher and it will be considered a riskier one because very simple logic, you have a lengthier maturity date, investor will have to wait for the long, lengthier time duration and chances of interest rate will be more, so the fluctuation will be more there. Now, what is duration measures? Duration measures the average time it takes for a bond to pay its coupon and principal. In how many months or years a bond will recover its coupon and premium. And therefore, we can say it measures the redemption period of bond. Okay. Next point is the bonds with higher coupon rate they will mature sooner because their interest rate is more higher. So let's say, for example, if you have a $100 bond and coupon rate is 10%, definitely the investment will be recovered sooner. If coupon rate is lower, investment will be recovered later compared to the bond which have lower coupon. So we can say higher coupon rate will have lower maturity or redemption date. Lower maturity, not redemption, because we are considering that both have the same redemption date. Maturity or let's believe be a duration at which which will you you will recover your principal and you will recover your interest. So the conclusion is the bonds with higher coupon will have less duration, will have less sensitivity to prices, and will be considered as less riskier. <clears throat> they will be considered less riskier, okay? And similarly, we have another concept called modified duration here. How you calculate it? We calculated may call it duration divided by 1 plus y to m. What is the significance of modified duration? Modified duration tells us the sensitivity of bond prices in terms of percentage for every percentage increase in interest rate. Say for example, if modified duration of bond is, any company's bond is 3%, what is the meaning of this 3%? For every 1%, movement in interest rate 
this bond price will move inversely in a multiple of 1% into 3%. Okay. Now, final point is duration is useful if there are small changes in interest rate Duration assumes that there is a linear relationship, linear relationship between interest rate and bond prices. Means if interest rate increases, bond prices decreases with a similar amount. We can say the graph would be like this one. This is linear relationship. So this means By duration, we predict the price of bond lower if there are larger changes in interest rate. Duration assumes that if you have small changes, there will be small value decrease. If you have, if you have small changes in interest rate, then there will be small reduction in prices. If you have larger, changes in interest rate, larger reduction. But in practical, in reality, the relationship is convex, not linear. Linear convex means this one. Relationship is this one, and this is called bond convexity. So what is bond convexity concept? Bond convexity assumes that there is no relation, non-linear relationship between interest rate and bond prices. It is not necessary that for every smaller change or every larger change, bond prices will react. No, it will be like a curve. And similarly, we can say that if we have large changes in interest rate, the bond prices, or which method is better? It is bond convexity because it incorporates the larger changes in interest rate. But if you have smaller changes in interest rate, we can use bond duration as well. Okay, so this was a very complex topic. I think you have some of the idea about it. Okay, take care.